Yo Gotti and Young Dolph are two Memphis rap legends. They had connections to each other in the streets, and back in the day, Gotti even wanted to sign Dolph to his label. But instead of linking up in the studio and putting on for the city together, they sparked a wild beef that led to diss tracks, death threats, and shootouts. And today, we're breaking down the entire story. Let's get right into it. Memphis is home to rap legends like 3-6 Mafia, 8-Ball and MJG, and more. But it's also one of the wildest cities in America. Some sources say that the violent crime in Memphis is five times higher than the national average. Almost every rapper from the city had to make it out of the streets, and that's allegedly where Dolph and Gotti first met. Rumors said that Dolph was actually Gotti's brother's plug back in the day. Dolph's parents were both addicted to crack when he was growing up, so he got active in the streets and made his own lane. Back then, he'd freestyle around his homies, but he never took music seriously until he almost died in a car crash. After Dolph decided to switch up how he moved, he went all in with his rap career. He started handing out free CDs all over the city, and it didn't take long for people to start paying attention. In 2010, he dropped a project called Welcome to Dolph World and picked up a lot of buzz in the city, but Dolph had bigger plans than just popping off in his hometown. That same year, he started his own label called Paper Route Empire. Every new project he dropped did bigger numbers than the last one, and it was clear that Dolph had plans to take over the game. In 2013, he released a collab project with Gucci Mane, which ended up catching the attention of Yo Gotti. Gotti's an icon in the Memphis rap scene. He's been in the game since 96, and in 2012, he started his own label, Collective Music Group, aka CMG. By 2014, he still didn't have any artists on the roster though, so he reached out to Dolph and offered him a deal. Back then, Dolph was buzzing, but hadn't really hit the mainstream yet. Linking up with Gotti definitely would've boosted his career, but that's not how Dolph wanted to play it. Even before he had a name in the industry, Dolph knew he wanted to create his own lane. He started a label before he even hit the charts, so it was clear that he had big plans. According to him, that's why he turned down Gotti's offer. Dolph told Sway, the only thing was going to happen behind it was people like, oh, he popped out because of Gotti. By the time Gotti tried to sign him in 2014, Dolph had already put a ton of work and money into his own career, and he didn't want all that to go to waste by riding someone else's wave. Sway told Dolph, hey, I know Gotti you know, respect that because he did the same thing. But unfortunately, that's not how it turned out. Dolph showed Gotti respect when he talked about the situation in interviews, but apparently there was already static behind the scenes. Nothing happened between them for a couple years though. Dolph stayed on the grind and went double platinum with OT Genesis, while Gotti decided to sign Black Youngsta and mentor him instead. Black Youngsta is another Memphis rapper who survived the trenches before hopping in the booth. He was raised by a single mom and had to learn how to get by at an early age. Youngsta got his first job at just seven years old stocking shelves at a grocery store, but he was fired for stealing food and got active in the streets. He was always in and out of jail on gun and drug charges, and that's where he first learned how to rap. In 2012, he dropped two projects and started building some momentum, and in 2014, he popped off with the track Heavy. The song put him on the map in the Memphis rap scene, and not before long, Yo Gotti hopped on the remix and signed Black Youngster to CMG. Youngster was later booked for allegedly dumping 100 rounds at Dolph, but it all started with social media disses. In February 2016, Dolph dropped his debut album and called it King of Memphis. Gotti had called himself the King of Memphis before, and he was allegedly tripping over the album title. Around the same time he released the album, Dolph made the beef official and tweeted, Bro went from being my number one fan and wanting to sign me to being my biggest hater. Hashtag facts. Gotti had beef in the rap game before, so fans expected him to clap back at Dolph. But instead, he just let his new artist do the dissing for him. While Gotti stayed quiet, Black Youngster hopped into the beef and called Dolph a And on social media, he wrote, When I see that Dolph, I'ma smack the shit out of him on my life. Black Youngster even rolled up to Dolph's hood with a bunch of his homies, but nothing serious went down. Then a few weeks later, Dolph clapped back on IG and aired Gotti out for hating on Memphis rappers and sending Black Youngster to fight for him. He also accused Gotti of putting the police on him. Oh, Gotti, you was a I just got back to the city, they said you trying to put charges on me and put the police on me. And around the same time, Dolph popped on the remix of the track Ready by Trouble and said, all of my they ready, y'all some you scared. All on the internet telling, trying to have a real gelling. This shit around my neck so heavy. I'ma keep dripping sauce, spaghetti. Fans linked the heavy line to Black Youngster's track heavy, and Dolph took more shots at him and Gotti with the lines, any that record when it's time for gangster shit, he the police. And I fucked your boss man baby mama, same hotel for four weeks. Never send a little boy to take care of grown man business. If I was you, I'd be mad at me too, so I ain't tripping. Black Youngster clapped back with the track Shake Some, where he called Dolph out by name and said, Dolph Thornton wanna play, I'm on tour with the K, Mac 11, Smith & Wesson, extended clip, 100 rounds on a Draco. How the f you the king of Memphis? You ain't from the city, you from Chicago. F boy, you better lay low. 
Killers move when I say so. I love n Rob instead of killing, raping n mamas and shit, little n. Dolph didn't respond to the track, but a few months later, he dropped the song Play With Your and took the beef with Gotti to the next level. Play With Your is a wild diss track where Dolph claimed he hooked up with Gotti's baby mama and said, Don't play with me, Gotti. You a man. You went from my biggest fan to my biggest hater. Begging me to sign with you, but I had too much paper. Still that same that used to front your big brother. Found out he a too, now I call him your big sister. And they said them on your team are in your draws. They say you make them call you boss, but they can't call you king because that's dog. But instead of coming back with his own song, Gotti just tweeted, I'm business partners with LA Reid and Jay-Z and blah, blah, blah. The beef cooled off for a while after this, but then Dolph dropped a video for Play With Your B and the situation got deadly. The video for the track shows Dolph stealing a girl from a Gotti lookalike, which was so disrespectful that it almost got him killed. A day after it dropped, someone let off over 100 shots in a Dolph's SUV when he was in North Carolina. The situation got crazy, but Dolph made it out alive because the whip was bulletproof. He still went on stage that night and performed Play With Your B which proved that he wasn't backing down from anyone. Black Youngster was charged with the shooting, but the case was dropped a couple years later due to lack of evidence. Dolph wasn't gonna let the shooting slow him down, and in April 2017, he even used it to help his career. He dropped an album called Bulletproof, and the track titles were actually a message to whoever tried to take him out. When you put all the tracks in order, it says, 100 shots in Charlotte, but I'm bulletproof, so f them. That's how I feel, all of them. I'm so real, I pray for my enemies. I'm everything you wanna be, shaking my head. The shooting in North Carolina wasn't the end though. Just a few months later, Dolph allegedly found out where Gotti was staying in LA. When he pulled up to press him, a fight broke out between their crews and Dolph ended up getting shot three times. Gotti's homie got booked for almost killing Dolph, but his charges ended up getting dropped because nobody would work with the cops. Back then, it seemed like the beef would keep going until somebody got killed. But after Dolph got shot, both sides just kind of moved on and focused on their own careers. Dolph was blowing up more than ever. Plus, he had just signed his cousin Key Glock and was busy with all of his charity work too. At the same time, Gotti's CMG label was picking up new artists and he was still working on his own music. But while the beef died down and nobody was sending shots, Dolph was tragically murdered before they could officially squash it. In November 2021, Dolph was caught by two shooters at Makita's Homemade Butter Cookies in Memphis. While he was shopping in the bakery, the gunman pulled up and shot him over 20 times. When the news broke, rumors immediately started flying that Gotti was behind it. But right now, there's no evidence that links him to the hit. The cops have charged five dudes who they believe were involved, but nobody knows why they wanted to kill Dolph. The way everything went down makes it clear that Dolph was the target, but we probably won't have any concrete answers till the trial starts. Dolph and Gotti linking up could have been huge for Memphis, but unfortunately, that's just not how it went. It's still not clear if Gotti was pressed like that over Dolph turning down his offer, or if there was more going on behind the scenes that we don't know about. But whatever the issue was, it led to one of the craziest rap beefs in Memphis history and helped turn Dolph into a legend in his hometown and the entire rap game. Rest in peace to young Dolph.